Welcome students. We are covering chapter 7 and this is uh, section 7.1. We're going to do a little review. Uh, we're going to try to kind of combine a few methods. We're going to look at our tables. We've gone over all of these different integration formulas before and we're going to see, you know, just just more practice on integration basically is what section 7.1 is about. So let's work a few. Uh, this one to me I see a u substitution so I'm going to do let u equal 3 plus 2x I will take the derivative of both sides and that be 2 dx that will give me that 1 half du equals dx so I'll replace this dx with 1 half du and I will get the integral of oh I better get my limits of integration if x is 2, then u would be equal to 3 plus 2 times 2, uh, 7. And if x is negative 1, then it's 3 plus 2 times negative 1. And that would be a 1 then. All right, so I'm going to plug these things in and write that down. All right, just writing this down and making it look a little prettier. This is, of course, my natural log. Um, which is number 10 over here and I will write that down and put in my limits of integration and see what I get. Alright, just chunking things in, natural log of 1 is 0 I end up with just those 1 half natural log of 7. The next one I look to see if there's anything in my tables that looks like this and there is not. I think about a u substitution but if I let u equal that denominator I'm not going to have what I need in the numerator so I'm going to piddle with this thing a little bit and one technique is uh, you can try multiplying top and bottom by an e to the x and then this term here will go away and then I'll have an e to the x on top which will end up being a u du. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by e to the x. Alright, after doing that computation and letting u equal e to the x, and e to the x is pretty cute because his derivative is just himself, so I'm, I've got this e to the x dx here, so I'm going to replace all of this with du. So I'm going to end up with integral of, that's going to be a du, and then I'll have a u squared plus 1. And that looks like, let's see, oh, it's this guy right here, number 12, where my a is 1. So I'll write that down. Okay, with my a being 1 and then doing my back substitution, there's what I end up with. Cool. Obviously this doesn't look like anything over in here. Um, you know, several different things you can do. I look to see if there's something I can factor. I can't see it. Since I have a denominator, I'm going to do what I call a bust a fraction. So I'm going to bust this up and maybe look at cosine x over secant x dx plus integral of sine cubed x dx over secant x and then I'll just simplify a bit this is 1 over cosine the secant is so that's going to be cosine squared and since this is 1 over 1 over cosine then I'll be able to flip that so I'm going to write those things down. This one happens to be um, I can use my double angle formulas on this so I'll go get that and write that down. This one I've done before uh, with a substitution I'm just gonna let u equal uh, sine x and then there's my dx sitting or my du sitting there so I'll write those things down. Alright there's my double angle formula there's my u substitution plugging those things in I just did a little manipulation here got this this one is just going to be my 1 half x. The next one is just going to be um, the integral of cosine u. I'm just going to have to look at this number 3 here and I'll be able to say that it is 1 over 2 sine of 2x and plugging in with my constants as well and I'll finish that up. All right, after my manipulation, this is what I get. All right, this next one I'm going to look at. 
maybe try to decide if it would factor so I could cancel. That's not going to work. Um, what about if I go ahead and do a long division? So I'm going to write that down and do my long division, but so far that's the only thing I see right out the gate. Reminding you of some long division in case you might have forgotten that. I'm doing x plus 4 into x squared plus 2, x minus 1. I'm going to say x goes into x squared x times. I do my multiplication. Now I'm going to subtract each term, which gives me minus 2x minus 1 x goes into minus 2x minus 2 times. That's going to be minus 2x minus 8. And then I subtract both of these terms, which means I change their signs. And that's a 7. So I'm going to look at integrating, since I've done my division here. And there's my remainder. I'm going to look at integrating um, this x minus 2 plus 7 over x plus 4, and I think that'll integrate quite nicely. Um, I'll have to end up using my natural log here, but that'll be all right. All right, when I went to mess with this, it just fell right out. It was just an x squared minus the 2x, and then the 7 is just a constant multiplier, and when I look at my natural log, the derivative of x plus 4 is just a 1, so it was just all sitting there. So that was all I had to do for that one. This example 5 is a messy little guy. I don't see him sitting in either one of these two, 11 or 13, which is where he'd have to be. So that means I need some difference of squares, so I am going to complete the square. So I'm just going to take this denominator and um, start looking at completing the square. Now after looking at this I see this must be a typo. So I'm going to erase it and then I will complete the square because that wouldn't make sense to complete the square with that thing in there. Alright. When you go to complete the square you take the term with the x and you will divide it by 2 and know that you've got to have some sort of um, something squared. So it's going to be the same number twice. So this will be, let me get rid of this thing, I don't really need this. This will just be this x plus 4 quantity squared, if you'll notice. That was the way I rigged it there. Now. The 16 is really what I need in there for this. Um, I'll make this a squarey guy bracket. And then I want you to look at it like this. So that you can see that this is x plus 4 quantity squared. And then that outlying nonsense is just a minus 9. And now I'm going to plug that back in. All I did was just add a 16 and take out a 16 in order to complete the square. Alright, the only reason I factored out that negative was because uh, that way it wouldn't mess me up and gunk me up whenever I was trying to look at this because I didn't want to look at that negative 2. I see that this one is this uh, inverse sign where a is 3 and my x is this x plus 4. And the derivative is indeed on top because the derivative of x plus 4 is just dx. So I'm good there. And this falls out completely to just the inverse sine of my x, which is x plus 4, over my a, which is 3, plus c. And that is all done. This next one I'm going to finagle with a little bit. I don't really see any u that I can get because I would need a sign up in here with if I was going to do some sort of u substitution. I see that I have a 1 plus cosine and, and I kind of like dealing with this 1 minus cosine squared or cosine squared plus sine squared. So I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit and I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by 1 minus cosine 
x and then I'm just going to try to use trig identities to make it into something that will integrate. This might work and it might not work and you'll find that sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't and it's just like a little magical combination trying to make it play nice. So what I've got so far is 1 minus cosine squared which I like. That's going to be sine squared so then I'm probably going to bust a fraction and see what I can do from there. All right, once I piddled with a little bit and wrote this as cosecant squared x, and I wrote this as uh, the cosine over sine, which is cotangent, and then a 1 over sine, then that would be cosecant. Then they're all just sitting right up here, number 6 and number 8, and they don't even have any constants for me to have to piddle with, so it's just going to be cotangent. That's not a cotangent the negative cotangent x and then it's going to be this cosecant cotangent is minus cosecant so I've already got a minus so that's plus and that answer is just cosecant x plus c and I would say that one was really rigged but that's all that's in this section is just quite a bit of practice might have been useful if they'd have put this at the beginning of chapter six but this is where it is, and if you have any questions, I mean, at least we got some more good practice integrating in, and that's what this section is about. If you have any questions, see me at the Collaborate.